the show. 5 inch, 5.5 inch or even larger. Which screen size should you consider while buying your next smartphone? A tablet with a keyboard or a laptop with a detachable display? We tell you which form factor suits best for you. You won't need to dig too deep into your pockets to get your hands on these products with our affordable deals segment. Well, today on Unbox, we're going to discuss whether size really matters and we're talking about smartphones. Now, 5-inch screen seems to have become standard, but we're still fighting a battle whether it's big screen, large screen, 4.7, 5.5 or 6.2. And basically, our experts are going to decode this mystery of size. Now tell us, 5 inch seems to be standard, so do you think it really makes sense for manufacturers to even look at a screen size that is bigger than that? I guess from a usability perspective, 4.7 inch to 5.5 inch is one of the best size uh, that should be on a smartphone. So 5 inch is kind of like a sweet spot which is good for mass production. People can have a 5 inch smartphone and can use it properly with a single hand. When you go above 5 inch, like for example 5.5 inch, that is sort of a niche territory. You go beyond 5.5 inch, it would be something like that uh, people with bigger fingers, bigger hands would like that sort of stuff. But not everybody would appreciate a smartphone which is above 5.5 inch. And when it comes to uh, women especially, uh, so they would prefer a smartphone which has somewhat smaller screen. Because not women have smaller hands than uh, men, very nice. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's the kind of thing. And 5 inches gets the perfect sweet spot for smartphone right. and beyond 5.5 inch that's something which is more geared for media consumption right. and more uh, heavy video stuff and all of that. Stuff. Okay and so do you also believe that bigger is better or do you think that to each his own really? Well the last year we've seen the tablets literally quite literally phased out because uh, people did not want a 7 inch or a bigger size to carry. When we talk about tablets merging into smartphones then only we see devices like the <laughs> Lenovo, Fab Plus, uh, 6 Plus and all which are you know going into stepping into the tablet category but still are on the smartphone range only. Uh, having said that people do like devices with big screen that we have seen and that's why we saw a couple of uh, manufacturers come up with devices with bigger screen size than the 5.5 inch right. threshold also. Especially but with Apple entering the market yeah, with yeah. a larger so screen size that actually goes so against that, what they've been That kind of sets a milestone time. and people are actually following it. Uh, so now we've actually seen manufacturers fitting in a bigger screen on the same size phone, right? So we've seen the bezels becoming thinner, the screen size becoming larger. So do you really need a large screen for regular consumption or can we actually just say that sometimes a big screen is just too big and the phablet category in itself is something that we should just phase out now? It's on the onus of manufacturers to build smartphones which have good screen to body ratios. If you make a smartphone with a 5.5 inch screen, you have to make sure that it does feel like a 5 inch smartphone right. and the overall bezel space is not wasted out that much. Right. Few of the smartphone manufacturers these days have uh, taken to the forefront regarding that and they have built smartphones with very nice edge to edge displays exactly. and stuff like that. So beyond a certain point it does not make sense to build a very huge smartphone because it becomes very difficult for day to day usage and also to keep it inside your pockets and exactly. purses. Exactly, like you'll have to basically just start a new trend where you have deep pockets and bigger pockets and call up all your Zara and tell them that fashion wise this isn't working for us right, anymore. Right, right. Uh, so, what do you think should be the way forward with manufacturers now? Well, in, in your question itself, you have told us the way forward. Some of the manufacturers have already started walking towards goal and that is all with, with the help of very slim or zero bezels as we, as we call it for the devices. Classic examples like the HTC Butterfly, right. that was the first phone to come with very slim bezels and it was a huge hit. Why? Because you have a bigger screen in a smaller form factor. Looking at devices which are available today, Chiku Qtera, 5.5 right. inch smartphone in a 5 inch case. I mean that is brilliant. Uh, going further down the line, U, Micromax is U Utopia. It, it has a 5.2 inch screen and by the looks of that, that phone looks like a phone which has a 4.7 inch screen. So that is why 
the whole debate of having bigger phones and bigger displays becomes kind of moot. Why? Because you have devices with bigger screens but at very small uh, sizes, very small form factors. And at the same time, so with those bigger screens, your utility be, uh, basically is getting enhanced. So yes, people can and people are looking for devices with bigger screens, be it with smaller, bo uh, higher body, body to yes, screen yes. ratios or not. But yes, uh, manufacturers have already started working towards that and even the budget smartphones, even the budget for performance category has started seeing devices coming in that uh, with, with all these design elements. So yes, uh, going forward we can s expect more and more devices to carry bigger screens but smaller, smaller bodies body. in which they house the screens. Right. We haven't seen uh, the display being used in a different way as just viewing, I mean apart from content consumption, no one's really doing anything extra like we saw it with the S6 Edge but that was about it. So you think that manufacturers should look at how better you could use your screen if you're giving them a larger space to you know view something or do something you should be able to do more than just it, make calls or watch videos uh, how do you think that we could make this experience any better so uh, the recent example would be of LG V10 this smartphone has a separate small screen on the top for notification and right. important stuff so that's the kind of innovation that people actually want to see when you don't have to fire up your whole screen to get to the content which is actually important to you yeah. and you can get your notifications and stuff that matters for example music player controls and all of that things and on a very easy basis the uh, Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge also tried to do that thing only right. and this is the sort of innovation that people need nowadays they don't need necessarily bigger screens but something which is different and, and more to do which is different. more usable. Sure. And talking about fancy features, now we see that 4K is all the rage. Now almost right. every other smartphone manufacturer is claiming that you can, you know, shoot 4K content, you can watch 4K content. But does 4K really make sense on a 5-inch, 5 5.5, or even a 6-inch screen? Really, like, does it make a difference to us? Let aside 4K, I'll say even 2K doesn't make sense on a 5. So just K is fine. Yeah, K, not even K is <laughs> fine. I mean, if you look at a HD screen, a uh, classic example, the Moto G3 Turbo, or for that matter, the Moto G3 also. They both have HD screens and they look brilliant. Like that's the kind of resolution or the pixel form factor that you are actually looking forward in a smartphone. So human eye is capable of looking or actually noticing the difference up to like 550 or maybe 570 ppi. Yeah, yeah, right. But beyond that, it is Any useless. Anyway, we can't perceive it. You, you, you cannot uh, perceive the difference between what a 2K resolution or a 4K resolution would look like. That is the reason why devices like the Z5 Premium from Sony had uh, fallen flat on their face right. because you know that 4K display apart from just sitting there and giving you that high resolution which you cannot use on a smaller screen they are consuming a lot of battery life and they are reducing the overall usage of your smartphone so yes uh, it's good to have high resolutions but not at the cost of hardware or, or even the usability of a smartphone right now as is the buying guide shows if you had to pick your favorite screen size and your favorite phone for that particular size which one would it be and why something like the Moto X Play which fits nicely into hand and you can use on a day-to-day -day basis. If someone is looking for something which is slightly bigger, then I would recommend the Samsung Galaxy S6. Right. And what about you? Well, uh, if you talk about my picks for favorite smartphones, I'll choose the Chiku Q Terra. I'm very happy with the design this uh, device offers and a, and a full HD resolution also, which is the perfect size and the perfect resolution for any person to enjoy the smartphone. Moving beyond to a full HD resolution, I will suggest the U Utopia is also right. another interesting smartphone. Why? Because it looks like a 4.7 inch device. Uh, it actually has a 5.2 inch screen and a 2K resolution also. Although there is no way of reducing the resolution, but yes, smaller size, high resolution. I mean, it, it fits, fits the bill and looking at the price point, which is about 25,000, people can use this phone and see how the things work out.
Great. So those are our recommendations for the best screen size and the best smartphones for that particular screen size. We're now going to take deal of the week. Technology today has made everything portable and digital storage devices are very popular in this category. Today you can get as much as 4000 gigabytes of data in devices no bigger than an average man's wallet. With HD and 4K videos and lossless audio, carrying a portable storage device is essential. If you want to get your hands on one such device, we have the perfect deal for you. Seagate's 2TB portable hard drive is now available at a discounted price of 6000 rupees instead of its average price of 8000 rupees. With the help of its USB 3.0 output, transferring data onto a PC or a smartphone will take just a few seconds. This will save your devices from slowing down due to huge amount of data being stored on your PC or smartphone. Well, that was the deal of the week. We're now going to move into second-hand buying guide and we have quite the interesting product lined up for you. While our taste buds love the flavor of fried food, it is critical that we enjoy a good snack without compromising on our health. This neat fryer is a blessing to all those who want to enjoy fried snacks without gaining too many extra kilos. Air fryers are available starting from 10,000 to 12,000 rupees. However, you could save some money and go in for a second-hand product. The Philips air fryer can be yours for just 6,000 rupees in the second-hand market. Make sure you clean the product thoroughly before use. With almost 80% less fat usage to fried food, it is surely a healthier option for all those who love snacking. Well, it's time now to take a break on Unbox, the Ultimate Tech Buying Guide show. Don't go anywhere because we're going to take quick fix and we're going to answer all your questions on it. Welcome back. This is Unbox, the ultimate tech buying guide show. We were discussing smartphones and the best screen size for one, but we're now going to move into quick fix where we take all your questions and here's question number one. I have bent my iPhone 6 Plus. Is there a way to unbend it? Now, my answer to that question would be just wear jeans that are less tight, but I'm sure our experts have a better uh, suggestion. So, if the iPhone is bent, what do you do? How do you fix it? So, the best way to fix a bent smartphone like that is get to your, go to your Apple store and get it replaced. Or just get a new one, essentially. Or just get a new one. And uh, in case you just bent it by accident, then there's no use trying to put force getting it back on shape. And... Apple has it covered in under the Apple Care and other protection uh, plans. So that's something which you can look into or you can just buy the newer models which are more resilient. Right, but you know the thing about it, like we saw it with the iPhone 6, but we've actually seen a bent iPhone 5S right, right, and right. right in front of our eyes. Now, is it a manufacturing, I mean obviously there's a manufacturing defect, but is it over time that they're not sturdy enough or we just... Well, there are a couple of factors which can lead to a bent phone. I mean... The sheer brute force that the person had applied on the 5S also could be one of the factors. We don't know what right. the guy was doing with that phone. But yes, we've seen a bent 5, 5S. So as, as the query comes in that uh, if the person has a bent phone, what can be done about it? As Aditya said, you can go ahead and get it, get it replaced from the Apple Center. Or if, you, if the bend is like very slight, if you can still use it, use it. There is no harm which, which comes... Uh, to the smartphone if it is bent slightly but if it is bent a little a bit more then it is definitely safer to get it replaced why because if the battery is bent or or there is some kind of damage to the battery it could lead to uh, damage or the battery leaking right. eventually le leading to a risk of potential fire and all the hazard. Okay. so basically assess the bend before you start panicking about your phone and we'll take question number two Which piece of technology is worth saving my money for in 2016? Alright, so 2016, new year, new resolutions and more reason to spend your money clearly on technology. So what would be your pick? 
in a budget friendly pick i would recommend the chromecast audio something for audio files like me right. who love to listen to their music out loud and throughout the day so he's given a budget friendly option would you like to go over the top and just well, completely I, yeah, break all boundaries yeah yeah I, i'll go totally crazy with this one because 2016 we are expecting the microsoft surface 4 pro to enter india and i am like totally pro for it so i am saving up right now for that device and the moment it comes into india i'm going to purchase it wow so that's quite actually the pick that the two of you have and speaking of surface pro we're actually going to move into the second story for this episode which is two in one laptops Now the debate has been that should you buy a tablet and buy a keyboard with it or should you buy a laptop which is a detachable screen so how would someone go about choosing a two in one laptop so what would be your recommendation like three things to keep in mind when you're looking to buy a hybrid uh, laptop so it all depends upon your use case for example someone who is a pro user who wants all of the raw power and stuff like that they should go for something which is a laptop first and a detachable screen later right and someone who has more of the media consumption and uh, stuff like that in mind they would go for the ipad pro or stuff by other manufacturers which isn't a more laptop friendly approach which is a tablet first which focuses on touch basically and then you have the add ons like keyboard etc and when it comes to someone who is just going uh, to get their work done and they want a more professional approach they should go for the surface pro 4 and stuff like that all right and what about you well i'll i'll walk the opposite path as what aditya has just said but ultra portables although the category might sound interesting with something with a hinge is much more important as people who are really looking forward to working on their devices for long hours they cannot sit there with a soft keyboard at a one particular fixed angle, angle they cannot right. work for long and we've time. actually seen people have a lot of problems exactly. even with the iPad Pro fixing it on a keyboard has been problematic it doesn't give right, you the balance right. and the support and the either you sturdiness have, uh, that you yeah. really need either while either you using. have one particular angle on which it can sit or you have to hold it and use right. the pencil with it E, e, same is the case with the Surface 4 Pro also, but there are certain different use case scenarios with, in which you can use this device. But at the same time, a device like a MacBook Air or the MacBook or the MacBook Pro, these are devices which you know people should look forward to. Even the Dell XPS 13, right. the Asus ZenBook, the new right, ZenBook. Right. Uh, these are the devices which are slim, ultra portable, lightweight, gives you brilliant battery backup, and in terms of performance, they are out there right. because. the processor that they feature it's i5 they have 4gb of ram 256gb or maybe lo lower storage but yes looking at all the form factor and the feature and functionality these devices offer there is no match or there is not there is nothing that can beat a laptop for its form factor so be it be it the case that ultra portables are getting popular these you know this this particular year but still laptops will stay even though ultra portables are there and i think both these categories will walk hand in hand right and do you think i mean he thinks that it's going to walk hand in hand but do you think that we're going to see a very uh, raging battle between hybrids and ultra portables i think the laptop is here to stay right. it won't go away for a very very long time because uh, people are looking for ultra portable solutions but they are not ready to ditch away their laptop straight away so i think both of these categories would go hand in hand for a very long time. All right, great. Well, that then was Unbox the Ultimate Tech Buying Guide show. I really hope you enjoyed it. Do keep writing into us at primetech@ndtv.com and we will see you next week. How should a consumer go about buying an air purifier? Sadly, there is no way that you can test the air purifier in the shop or where you are picking it from. Using an air purifier is always advisable because you know you any which way know that the air quality is quite bad. How do we know that the newer devices which are coming in the market are actually working up to the expectation? We're basically discussing whether VoIP calling is actually taking over traditional calls. There are applications available in both the Android and iOS market that allow you to call. people sitting out of the country 3g is abrupt you get it somewhere you don't get it somewhere so the moment the the connection fluctuates you your your call is dropped